Hello, my name is Greg Raleigh. I'm the technical coordinator at St. Luke's Medical Center for comprehensive wound care and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the technical aspects of continuing back therapy inside the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. What you're looking at on this slide is a peri monoplace chamber and our multi-place chamber at St. Luke's Medical Center, the inside of the chamber. Here we have the inside of a monoplace peri chamber. What you're looking at is the vac dressing placed on a patient's right foot. It's connected to the tubing which is also connected to a vacuum regulator mounted on the inside of the chamber door. The regulator is made by Boringer Company. Um, below it is a T-piece which has one side going to the patient's tubing and the other side contains a, a vacuum relief valve which is preset at about 25 to 50 millimeters of mercury pressure uh, greater than the normal vac setting. When we're in the chamber and the chamber door is closed and we pressurize the chamber, we have an increased pressure above ambient pressure which is outside the chamber. If a hole should form in the, in the chamber hull, there's gonna be a flow of gas from inside the high pressure area to the low pressure outside the chamber. If we allow ourselves to regulate that flow of gas, we can control the amount of suction that's available. That's how we can make this sole system work. This is a schematic of the monoplace chamber vacuum device. The vertical portion in the center is a cutaway of the chamber door, which contains a port plug that is just a metal piece that allows us to pass things inside and out of the chamber. The purpose of the internal mounted vacuum regulator is to control the amount of suction that the patient receives. Below the vacuum regulator is a T-piece. On the T-piece is a hose barb which is connected to the tubing for the patient's vac canister and the vac canister is connected to the patient. The other wing of the T-piece has an adjustable vacuum relief valve. The relief valve provides relief in case the vacuum regulator should catastrophically fail. That way the patient is not subjected to two and a half atmospheres of suction. In other words, if the patient is receiving 100 millimeters of vacuum, we can preset the adjustable vacuum relief for 125 to 150 millimeters of mercury. And that way, when and if a vacuum regulator should fail, they will have at most a 125 to 150 millimeters of vacuum applied directly to the wound. They would never receive the full two and one half atmospheres of suction that could be provided by the chamber in case of, the, of a failure of the regulator. Externally, there's a three-way valve. On one side of the valve is a diffuser. When the chamber is at pressure, we turn the three-way valve to the diffuser. And what that does is we are now using the chamber pressure gradient in order to drive this device. The diffuser just helps break up the flow of air on the outside of the chamber to make it less of a, th of a threat so nobody ever is subjected to a direct flow of gas and it also helps quiet down the flow. The other wing of the three-way valve is connected to a hose barb and that again can be connected to suction which is usually a portable suction device such as a Gompco suction. The Boringer regulator has an on-off switch basically which allows us to turn off suction when the chamber is, is not in use for vac. When the chamber is at surface, there is no pressure gradient and the device won't work unless we provide an external means of providing suction. We do not ever want to connect this to hospital wall suction. If we should pressurize the chamber with 100% oxygen while we are connected to wall suction, we run the risk of pressurizing hospital wall suction with 100% oxygen. This is against NFPA regulations. This is a schematic of the multi-place chamber vacuum assembly. The external components are identical to the monoplace chamber. We have a three-way valve with a diffuser and tubing which is connected to a portable suction device. Again, this should never be connected to hospital wall suction. Internally, we have again a Boringer vacuum regulator. 
In this case, the vacuum regulator is connected to a manifold which distributes the vacuum to anywhere from one to however many patients or valves we have connected to the manifold. Also on the manifold is a vacuum gauge and again an adjustable vacuum relief valve. The relief valve on the multi-place system is identical to that on the mono. The adjustable vacuum relief valve is again the same as on the mono place chamber. Its purpose is to provide relief of the vacuum in case we have a catastrophic accident with the vacuum regulator. We also have a vacuum gauge located on the manifold. The Boehringer vacuum regulator is not pressure compensated. If we have a leak in the patient's circuit, it will not be reflected on the gauge of the vacuum regulator. That is the reason for the vacuum gauge on the manifold. When there's a difference between the vacuum regulator gauge and the vacuum gauge on the manifold, we know we have a leak in the circuit. That causes us then to search for the leak and correct the situation. From the manifold, we have a series of quarter turn ball valves which have hose barbs which are then connected to the patient's tubing. The ball valves are used to close off circuits that are not in use. With this setup, we only are allowed to deliver one preset therapeutic level of vacuum to all patients. It's the same for all patients. We have chosen to adjust ours to 100 millimeters of mercury vacuum. It's a compromise. We would rather have two hours of 100 millimeters of mercury vacuum than to have no vacuum for two hours while in the chamber. This is the brass manifold that we use inside our multi-place chamber. On the left hand side is a quick disconnect which connects the Boehringer vacuum regulator via a hose to the manifold. On the right is a vacuum manometer and a vacuum relief valve. Hanging down from the manifold are five quarter turn ball valves that we use to shut or open vacuum to a patient. When there is no patient on a line, it has to be turned off or we have a leak in the circuit and it diminishes the amount of vacuum available to the other patients. This is the inside of our multi-place chamber at St. Luke's Medical Center. On the wall, you'll see the black Boehringer vacuum regulator. It has a white hose which is connected to the manifold and the patient circuits are all hanging down directly underneath. The hoses are about eight feet long. The eight feet of hosing along with the patient's vac circuit provide us enough length to get to all of our patients in the chamber. Our chamber is capable of handling six patients at one time. We only have five vac setups and this has been sufficient for our use because we have not yet had six patients in the chamber all on vac at the same time. We have, have however had five. This is the three-way valve on the exterior of the multi-place chamber. It is currently in the pressure setting. That means that we are going to be deriving our pressure from the pressure gradient across the chamber hull. When the valve is rotated 180 degrees to the surface position, we need to turn on a GOMCO suction device in order to provide vacuum for when the chamber is at surface pressure. This is the GOMCO pump located outside of our multi-place chamber. This pump is turned on and connected to the three-way valve any time that the chamber is at less than 10 feet of seawater pressure. When the chamber is at 10 feet of seawater or less or on surface, we need to provide suction for our patients. This is typical for when the patients are entering the chamber or exiting the chamber. The egress process can take up to 20 minutes and we like to continue our vacuum while the chamber is at surface and we are loading or unloading the chamber. Once the patient has entered the chamber, we remove the vac canister from the vac, we connect it to our own tubing and turn on the external suction device. We have found several adapters to connect to the various canisters that are used by KCI for their suction devices. This is the adapter we have found for the original vac. It's simply a piece of argyle tubing, bubble tubing, where we have cut it at its widest point, which allows us to connect to the male connection on the vac canister. This is the adapter that we have found for connecting to the vac ATS. It's simply a respiratory fitting for connecting oxygen tubing. 
It fits the op opening in the top of the VAC ATS canister. The other end is connected to the manifold inside the chamber. The same connection that is used to connect to the VAC ATS is also fitted for the mini VAC. The VAC Freedom has a smaller opening and a different connector is needed. This connector was scavenged from a blood pressure cuff.